Watching, uh, you just noticed you saw a picture of Ken Hensley, and so he was um, just kind of music aficionado. Uh, he did everything uh, on the band uh, Uriah Heep uh, from 1970 to 1980, um, uh, mainly on the keyboards, but he did some excellent guitar work, slide guitar in a lot of their songs, and he wrote a lot of their songs. Well, he passed away a couple of days ago at the age of 75. I think it was suddenly, I'm not really sure what he died of, but um. And it comes only six weeks after his bandmate, uh, drummer Lee Kerslick, um, he passed away. Uh, and uh, he actually played with Ozzy in some of Ozzy's solo work. So um, Ozzy Osbourne, kind of, I guess. Ozzy Osbourne, yes. And so it's kind of one-two hit for your for Uriah Heap fans. Um, and it's it makes uh, Matt Box, I believe that's his name, uh, the guitarist for Uriah Heap, the, the, the soul founding uh, member uh, still alive. So... Um, pretty sad day. Uh, so I thought maybe it would be fitting for us because you and I did talk about some Uriah Heap. I did say that this is a band that I've discovered really. I mean, I knew about the band, but my son loves the band. And so through him, um, I'm actually discovering some of their songs. And I had said to you, you know, when we first started this, you know, I'd love for you to get into Uriah Heap. So what better way to maybe start off with, you know, sort of in remembrance of, uh, of Ken Hensley. All right. So this song is called Shadows of Grief. And uh, that's very uplifting. Yeah. Right. And grief. Right. Maybe it's been yeah. um, no, looking uh, forward to it. I haven't heard them before. So. I think it's going to be a little bit of a ride for you. And I'm really looking yeah. forward to seeing, uh, you know, how, you, you know, what you think. Okay, cool. Let's get to it. sound that is cool i guess it's i guess it's like a pipe organ sound something like that i'm gonna start from the beginning again here we go
I'm really liking this one so far. It's going to be added to a playlist, I'm sure. Right, let me go back a little bit here. The part where it slows down. There we go.
right, nice. That was a real good one. That's a keeper. Very, very good. Hey, I see you back. So, uh, um, a good ride? Bad ride? Oh, yeah, this was good, man. This is good. Um, I said in the reaction, actually, that, you know, I'm a fan already just based on this song. So, wow. I would definitely... You know, it's it's yeah, that can <laughs> it's a real <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um no, it's always a treat when you hear, you know, I've known the name of the band, you know, yeah, uh, you know, for a long time. Um even where I looked, you know, you know, I was you you know, I thought it was pretty cool that they got the name from some Dickens character, right? Was it from right uh, from uh, David from, from David, Copperfield? David Copperfield, yep. I don't know. You could take any of his books and find a funky name. But um, uh, so I knew the name. Um, I knew they were fairly big. I just never listened to them. I, I really had no idea what type of music they were. So um, I'm just wondering, you, you know, this song, I guess you could put it up, put it, put it sort of in the category of a progressive type of thing. Oh, big time. So is yeah. all their stuff pretty much in that? Yeah. Uh, mold yeah not everything like this um transition transition up and mm -hmm. down you know uh very sort of composition production wise you know you could see a lot went into it um yeah. i'm not saying the other songs you know there's no production or composition or thought but what i'm saying is that this is this kind of reminded me um this little bit of uh yes a little bit of jet hotel you know and you, know, you could say you maybe they were in purple in there, you know, like the, the organ. Purple. Yeah, the organ, know, big that, time. That was, yeah, yeah, and so, and the um the yeah. lead singer, the singer's voice too, right? A little bit like I don't know the name of the original. Yeah, so song, but it, it was in that vein, sort of. Right. Not, not to take away from Uriah Heep, you know. Yes. Yeah, so reality. so the lead singer, his name is David, and I have it written down somewhere. I think it's David Byron. Yeah, and. That guy, I, that's the thing too, right? I mean, I had known of the band and there's that one song that I actually mentioned to you. And if you really, really never heard, heard of it, then that's be a great song for you down the road to listen to, um, to react to. It's um, Easy Living. Um, and I think maybe possibly, you, know, you don't I know it, I, but I think you I have. I think I heard that, but it was so long ago. So you know? why not? Yeah. And I'm like reborn. So it's all, you know, I mean, you know, in a, in a and, secular way. Right. <laughs> so it's like new to me again. So we are keeping sort of Ken... Uh, you know, sort of. Well, I'm not gonna just spotlight him, but um, but that said, David, his voice. You know, as I listen from song to song, you know, and I'm like to my son, I'm like, my God, that voice is just amazing. You know, and he just, it's like, la. You know, you could tell that he had structural change. Uh, I mean, I'd be surprised to learn someone out there is gonna say he never had structural training before. You know, uh, uh, on his voice, but you could just tell it's just a very trained voice you know just can go up to really high and, and like that and a lot of that background stuff like that like it almost i think it goes with the organ it seems like ken and david are kind of like playing over each other about, you know with the organ and the, the background vocals yeah you know? right yeah, yeah there's yeah. that one part there in, in the um i guess towards the end of the the whole long instrumental where that sounded really good yeah, it's almost as though David's voice is helping to bring, I mean, you don't really have to do that too much to Ken's playing, but that said, just really even bringing it up even more, even that extra yeah. notch, you know, and you think, my God, is that an instrument? No, well, that's his voice. That's one yeah. of the instruments. So, yeah. um, yeah, it's just, a, it's, a, you know, I love that dom, 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 you know, in the be beginning, that sort of that riff and they keep on just, mm -hmm. you know, that's the thing that really kicks off the song and gets into it. Um, and then, you know, just, uh, and then you get into the lyrics and, you know, it's really mainly the, the music, you know, but, yeah. uh, you know, I guess we'll get into lyrics a little bit, but, you know, and then back into, into, you know, back into like the music and then it kind of goes somewhere else, you know, and then it slows down, you know, like almost like this sort of funeral kind of like grief, you know, like there's this pall yeah, over the whole thing, the, uh, the you know, matter. And that's where the vocals all like the background vocals come in and almost like rise up, like, you know, up to the sky and out into space, mm -hmm. like kind of like otherworldly, you know, and it was really cool kind of how that song was going down that route. And then, uh, so yeah. Yeah. And you know, what's really interesting. I'm not, it's kind of, I'm kind of weird with progression, you know, um, progressive music. Uh, there's just, there's some that I love and there's some other that I just, I don't know. It's almost like it's a ride. 
that is it makes that left turn you know progressive music a lot of it takes turns sometimes i get thrown out (laughs) with one of the turns and i'm like i'm out of here i brush myself off and i walk away um and i kind of sometimes it just takes a it's a subsequent listen listenings you know it it, listens (laughs) well you know what it actually is the reason why and we can get down we can get into this down the road here but when we get into some jet hotel it's actually why I kind of got off the train, the Jet Hotel train, um, after I think it's what uh, I thick as a brick, um, and that's a whole nother story. But I'm kind of fickle with progressive. You know, some of it is amazing. Some of the yes stuff is amazing and all like that. So this, um, I'm actually surprised that I love this song so much. And so uh, I'm not. I think it, I think it fits in right with some of the other stuff you you had me listen to, um, like Lucifer and. Um, yeah uh black sabbath stuff so i'm not i'm not really surprised by that well you know what because you really have there's that guitar sound that comes into in the song it's very like you said deep purplish you know it it has that guitar feel you know you you think our viewers might think we're a little guitar biased (laughs) (laughs) look at that look at your 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 background too Put that well, in the comments. Only learn Let how us to know. play the damn things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's only for show, you know, these little paintings there. <laughs> I could buy a big drum kit just to just to show it too. And you know? all those guitars on Chris's wall, those are all like plastic, you know. <laughs> They're just props. Yeah, you know? They look 3D, but I painted them on the wall that way. <laughs> um yeah so so this is now some of the other stuff you kind of like asked me earlier, like you know, is this like you know, do they have a lot of this kind of stuff? And yeah, I mean, Gypsy comes to mind. Um, I think Salisbury, you know, there's some other songs All right, too. Well, well, I'm going to be reacting to some more, right? Oh, absolutely. And then you got some others that are kind of like quick hitters in out rockers mm-hmm. too. So um, it's just, it really is amazing how this band never really, I mean, they have a strong, they have a following and their mm-hmm. fans are like, I think from what I understand, they're like, they're kind of rabid, very devoted, but it is an, it, it's an underrated band, you know, um, you know, when people talk about Deep Purple and Black Sabbath, you know, um, you know, this band gets left out of that conversation. And I think as we go along, I'd, I'd be kind of really curious, you know, as we get to a certain point, if you've heard several songs, for you to maybe like, you know, sort of talk about that and think about that and like, you know, what, you know, why you think that they, I have some ideas, but you know, why mm-hmm. we think that this band has gone kind of unnoticed, you know, but, um, right. you know, I mean, if, if they keep on having band members die off like that, so maybe at some point, um, at some point they'll get some recognition, they get some recognition. Well, the one guy, the last guy, I believe the last founding member, right. Matt Box, I think that's his name. Um, and he seems to be alive and well doing interviews, a uh, very, very cool guy. And, um, so Matt stay around for a long time, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess as years go by. Now you know, he gets to say in all those interviews that he's the one who really wrote all the songs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right, cool. This was good, man. All right. A good one. All right, thank you, everyone. All, all right. right. Take, take care. See you all.